Serving hyperscale requirements requires a whole new mindset and operating model, something my next guest has a lot of expertise in. Uh, I'm now joined at Infrastructure 2022 with uh, Ernest Popscu, Global Head of Data Center Site Selection for Iron Mountain Data Centers. And Ernest, thanks so much for talking to me. Thanks for having me. Um, I Glad believe to be this, here. Is your, this is your first conference this uh, is in a my very first long conference. time. So how, how are you finding things so far? My first conference ever. Yeah, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy talking about the data center industry and uh, sharing you know, whatever little knowledge I've accumulated yeah, over the years. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you used to be with AWS and like some of the hyperscale. Yeah, I worked for uh, for Amazon for about eight years, AWS four, and then uh, Facebook for a little yeah. less than a year. And yeah. now I'm with Iron Mountain. Okay, so when we look into site selection, what are the challenges and pitfalls um, around site selection? What I'm finding this to to service the hyperscale community? Yeah, great great question. So you know, site selection is sort of the tip of the spear. Um, you know, land represents anywhere between five to ten percent of the total build capex and less than 1% of the total data center infrastructure capex if you include servers and racks and, um, and everything else. Uh, so, so it's a seemingly unimportant component of the infrastructure build, but, but frankly, it's the sort of one that pulls all the other ones along. So having a robust uh, data-driven site selection process is key because um, you know, once you buy land, entitle it, zone it, terminate all the utilities required to operate and uh, build a data center, um, you're done, you're committed. So if you built in the wrong location, uh, you're in trouble um, because you're either not gonna get any business or um, you know, it's gonna take a very long time for you to get business. So site selection is a critical component of uh, you know, the data center development. Okay, we, we're hearing a lot of stories around um, like hyperscale development overflowing out of the big cities, the tier one markets towards tier two and even proximity markets. What's your view of that? And is there any markets around the globe, especially in Europe and North America? Uh, they really grab your attention? Yeah, great, great question. So typically, um, the hyperscale industry, um, the core business expanded in, you know, what are, you know, probably typically referred to as um, regions, mega regions, you know, Virginia, you know, Phoenix, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and, and typically, you know, they were um, driven by the premier hyperscale uh, cloud provider, AWS. So that in and of itself created an ecosystem around wherever AWS planted its flag. But uh, you know, with the Internet of Things, with um, you know, advents of new technology, you know, new low latency application requirements, um, a lot of the industry is going to the customers. So you know, what, what's commonly referred to as the edge. Um, so the, the mega regions, in my opinion, are a thing of the past. There, there's gonna to continue wow. to be a lot of development, but I think a lot of the industry is gonna bring its services to the edge, to the eyeballs. So, you know, in the US, it's you know, most of the major metro football cities. In Europe, it's you know, all of the metro areas. There's gonna be a, a tremendous amount of deployed capacity um, that's being brought to the customers. So I think that's the way the future, so. Okay, but actually, I mean, that flows nicely into my next question, because my next question is around lease versus build. Um, what's the state of the market around that? Because we, we see Hyperscale is announcing a lot of stuff, but then we also see the, the, the operators announcing several <laughs> huge builds. I mean, you go into Mexico, several parts of um, the US, across Europe is, is a trend. Um, so what, what's the state of lease versus build? Yeah, great, great question. So. The hyperscale's, hyperscaler's preference, strong preference, is to self-perform, to, to build. Um, but the development cycle is long, hmm. and they tend to operate in a just-in-time manner. And there tend to be you know, uh, unplanned events, COVID, you know, manufacturing shutdown, supply shortages, demand spikes. Um, and, and whenever there's spillover, that creates an opportunity for a you know, third-party ecosystem to survive. And, and that Applies leasing, you know, built to suit land, co-location, and and the this ecosystem has gotten pretty smart. When a hyperscaler announces plants its flag in a location, uh, it, it it sort of moves a lot of opportunistic buyers that tend to procure land around that hyperscaler um, hyperscaler's location, taking advantage of you know sometimes a hmm. short-sighted, just-in-time manner from an infrastructure perspective. Um, and what that creates is it creates a sort of built-to-suit built ecosystem. Um, but it's also very fragmented and regionalized. I, I'd argue that most of the built-to-suit 
take place in the Americas, where mm -hmm. you've got large campus-style deployments. Uh, EMEA, probably about 50-50, you know, most of the densely populated um, regions, uh, you know, can't accord um, a, a campus-style deployment. Um, you know, with some exception, Nordic states, you know, possibly, you know, Spain. Uh, so for the most part, um, a lot of the uh, hyperscalers um, tend to go to market via a co-location vehicle. And APAC, I think, is probably mostly co-location with some, some little self-perform. Okay. You touched on supply chain uh, spikes in demand. We are going to enter a challenging phase um, over the next six, eight months, over the winter. What are Happy Scale is looking for in the data center partners during this period? Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the term partnership gets thrown around uh, quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a marketing jargon term. That, that's right. But, you know, I, I'd argue that the industry is fairly commoditized. I, I, I think the, the hyperscalers, for, for the most part, um, again, have a strong preference to self-perform. Um, the most important aspect is to be flexible um, and to be opportunistic when directed to go somewhere to sort of seize that opportunity. And, and, and the best you can hope for when you're in this industry on the sell side is that you've done a lot of uh, you know, good market gathering intelligence and are anticipating where the hyperscalers are going to need to go. Uh, so when called upon, you can deliver capacity quickly. So I think that 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 honestly is probably the the, the extent of the relationship and how to best be a good partner. Okay, and Ernest, you joined Iron Mountain recently. Um, so give us the spiel. How's the role going so far? What are you focusing on, and uh, what can we expect? Yeah, Iron Mountain's a fantastic company. So a after having been on the buy side for quite some time, five years plus, I wanted to experience yeah. the sales side. Um, I thought it was, it's a seller's market. I think it's you know, a very dynamic industry. Um, you know, I think I can add a lot of value. And, and, and Iron Mountain ha has some uh, amazing ambitions. And part of what attracted me to Iron Mountain is uh, its suite of complementary products. It has over 1,400 records management facilities that I'm gonna work very hard to try and convert some of those into data centers, which I think is a huge competitive differentiator. Are you talking about? Global. Okay. It's pretty amazing. Global. Yeah, going full force this time. Going full force. You know, I think we're gonna try to, you know, make a, take, take a good run at going after some of this edge demand that I think is gonna be emergent, you know, going after these tier two, tier three markets, breaking away from the herd. Um, and, and sort of leading development activities in some of these markets that are currently underserved that inevitably are gonna take off. So, um, and, and also the other thing that's really interesting about Iron Mountain is again, records management, data centers, asset lifecycle management. So it could be an a la carte menu uh, of services or a sort of one-stop shop for all of your you know, digital and physical hardware um, storage compute needs, so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive yeah. company. It's been great so far. So, just to get a bit of an idea, I don't know if it's too early for you to talk about these kind of things, but how much do data centers represent within the Iron Mountain's revenue stream, and what's the goal? Like, where do you want to be, let's say, in two, three, four? Years? Yeah, yeah, great, great, great question. I, I, I'm, I'm, I should know the answer. I, I don't. <laughs> it's too soon. Um, <laughs> so I want to be careful. So m most of this is publicly uh, available, yeah. it's a publicly traded company. I, I want to say that the, the IMDC, Iron Mountain Data Centers, probably represents less than 10% of the revenue. Um, so the records management, the asset lifecycle management business is, is still driving um, you know, a lot of the revenue generation. Um, IMDC probably commands a lot of the capital deployment, generates very little of the revenue for now because it's such a capital intensive business. Uh, but again, you know, we've got tremendous ambitions um, to continue to expand and, and you know we're, we're talking about expanding across the different um, sort of streams from a, a built to suit land bank perspective from a co-location perspective in the tier one markets and also driving edge in tier two and three markets which is really exciting and uh, and challenging at the same time okay so just a ballpark figure from 10 percent roughly 10 percent you want to go to <laughs> <laughs> uh well you you know I, 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 I know it's, it's a great question, and, and then next time we speak, I'll have okay. a better answer. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have one right now, but, but, okay. but suffice to say that I think we're currently in, let's say, 10 markets from a, a, a data center perspective. Um, a significant data center footprint perspective, I think we're in more markets if you, you know, include some of the smaller deployments. But I, you know, my, my, my objective is to try to get us to 50 over the next five to 10 yeah. years. Okay. So yeah, I'd say you know, almost a 
5x growth curve over the next few years. Okay. And what that's going to translate into revenue versus the revenue for the entire rest of the organization, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm going to take a look in, into that and I'll, I'll have a better answer next time we we'll, talk. We'll be here to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then Ernest, we are in Toronto um, for Infrastructure 2022 by Infrastructure Research. Um, what, when we get back here 12 months, in 12 months' time, what do you expect to have happen in the industry? What's the one thing that you think it will take place in the next 12 months? Wow, great question. Uh, what I think is going to take place in the next 12 months? Well, I, I think we're going to see an explosion of deployments at the edge. Uh, I think that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to continue to, 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 to experience unprecedented growth. I also think we're going to start seeing a slowdown in terms of hyperscale, built-to-suit, co-location deployment. And the reason I think that's going to happen is um, predominantly because I think the hyperscalers are going to catch up. Um, you know, I think, I think there, there's you know, curves to this, this business. I think currently um, you know, there was a gap in supply which uh, allowed you know, a lot of the industry to opportunistically uh, sell off its capacity. It's created shortages. You know, seller's market. I think over the next 12 to 18 months, as we return to normal, hopefully, uh, unless there's continued you know political instability, you know, which is somewhat unpredictable, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're going to see the hyperscalers catch up on supply, and I think you're likely going to see a slowdown in core regions. Um, but whether it's 12 months or 18 to 24 months, I think that's a little tougher to predict. Mm. But very interesting. Um, we can't wait to see this, this decentralization of digital infrastructure. I think it's happening. You know, I yeah. think you're starting to see it's it, and I think up. it's just going to continue to yeah. explode like most things in tech do. Um, it's sort of a hockey stick curve, yeah. Okay. Well, Ernest Popescu, Global Head of Data Center Site Selection at Iron Mountain Data Center. It's quite a long <laughs> name. Very long title, yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds you, important. <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me. Um, as for you at home, don't forget to check the Tech Capital and subscribe to our channels for more breaking and timing news from across the digital infrastructure sector worldwide. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report.